Hi everyone and welcome to Let's Play Frog Fractions. Uh, there's a Kickstarter out for the sequel to this game so I decided to do a quick Let's Play of it. I've played a little but I um, sort of got that far before my business partner Bishop insisted I play this game and so I decided to make a Let's Play of it because it's rather interesting, I guess. And also, I'm not great at fractions, you know, I feel like I could learn more about fractions, become more mathematically literate, you know. So yeah, I'm gonna play some frog fractions. It's URL of the year edition, Giant Bomb gave it URL of the year, and uh, apparently it is the absolute best way to teach your child about fractions. So yeah, let, let's play some frog fractions, okay. So we are a frog on a lily pad. We can attack these bugs with our tongue. Oi, get away from my fruit. Uh, the, the bugs will try to eat the fruit. Um, and when they do, you get indignity points. Get away from my fruit. Get, get the hell away from my fruit. And as you can see, we get fractions. Our score is 1573 out of 56. And we have five fruit, 13 zork mids, and currently no indignity. Indignity gets reset at the, at the end of each round. Um, Let's upgrade to a turtle so we can get more fruit. Okay, so we, n we can now go... Oh my god! Whoa, look at all this fruit down here! Fruit! We have like a billion fruit now. Yeah! Can I go up? Whoa! Uh, right, let's go. Oh! I accidentally paused it. I don't even know how I actually did that. So we got half, we're, and we're getting two thirds and six sevenths. And uh, what is this game? I don't. I don't think I understand this game and how it works. No, I'm getting indignity. If you get indig full indignity, the game is over and you have to start again and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna get the static tongue upgrade because this makes the game a lot more straightforward to play because you go bzzzap. You, you rub balloons against your tongue to make it staticky which... Oh I keep doing that. Go on. I mean why play all these big AAA games when you have frog fractions really? Uh, like. This is true, like, hardcore gaming, you know? It doesn't hold your hand with tutorials, it just goes on in there and teaches you the real deal about fractions. And, I mean, I am learning so much about fractions now. Lots of things about fractions that I didn't know, like that fractions come from bugs. I didn't know that. Um, let's get the cybernetic brain because it's better than a regular frog brain so okay so now our score is 1.49 e plus 2 which oh look at all these amazing fractions we're getting from enemies I mean they, they make a lot of sense you know maths and more maths this is definitely applicable to my daily life. No, oh, stop it. Uh, let's... Okay, so we get durians and... Ugh! So now we're learning about typing, which is also really relevant life skill to our daily lives, you know? We should teach children all about typing from an early age, so it's good that Frog Fractions is teaching not just... Uh, it's good that Frog Fractions is teaching typing and not just fractions. 
let's let's get a dragon. Yeah, we'll upgrade the turtle to a dragon. Okay, so so now he's a dragon and he can go up as well, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh you it's now bullet hell. Uh cuz you know, why not? It's 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 genre defying, you know? You touch genre it only holds your game back, you know? You don't you don't need it. We don't need genre. What happens if we go right up? Uh We need a lot of Zorkmids for those. We've got a lot of fruit. Oh we can get a warp drive now. Yeah, let's get a warp drive. Bet we can go into Holy shit! What? Glad you could finally make it, Lieutenant Hop. We're dealing with a serious infestation here. Be careful around those asteroids. Don't let them push you around. Roger that. You let asteroids push you around. We told you not to do that. I'm so sorry, Shu. Oh my god. <laughs> wow, I've never seen those boobs that shoot at anyone but you. I think they might be racist. Oh no, they're racist and they're in space. They're spacists. Spaces bugs! This is the true sequel to Let's Play Mass Effect. There's Bug Mars now, their home planet. They're gonna regret messing with us. Do a barrel roll! Can I? I'm trying to do a barrel roll. Oh. Uh, I'm a frog riding on a dragon, floating through an asteroid field collecting durians while licking bugs to collect fractions. This is the most good flying with you, Lieutenant Hop. See you on the other side. Thanks. Warning. No refuge. Beat attitude for gains. Oh hello, I wonder if the big guy over there has any t tips about dealing with fractions. It, my tongue does nothing! Oh god! Can I just get past him? What do I do? I don't know what to do. Can I run away? Um Um... Oh! Oh! Yeah! Yeah, no hand-holding in this game. This is balls-to-the-wall hardcore action. This is game of the year shit right here. Yeah. And fractions, you know? Like, this is edutainment at its finest. I am learning about the fractions and the typing and, you know, uh, and I'm visiting fantastic locales like Mars. You are under arrest. Thank you for your cooperation. Mr. Hop, the, chance, the charges against you are severe. You're accused of breaking and entering into our native habitat, Bug Mars, with intent to purloin our delicious space flute, fruit. How do you plead? You're not really dressed for cult. I'll be waiting when you get out, I promise. Um... I... I... Has anyone ever told you that you look delicious? Not with that glossy-eyed stare, no. These charges carry a minimum sentence of 20 years hard labour. But there's a special offer this week. How would you like to become a naturalised citizen of Bug Mars? 
absolutely, I love it here on Bug Mars. I've never been to a boogier Mars. Excellent. All you need to do is pass a test on the history and culture of this fine planet. Shall we begin? Our bug flag has four stripes. What do they represent? Um. Ah. Uh, Peristalsis? Gross, but yes, that's right. Next question on the series Bug Jersey Shore. What is Bug Snooky's favourite flavour ice cream? Um, aha! Trick question! Ice cream is unheard of on Bug Mars because of the climate. Well, I had to try, didn't I? Four score and twenty bugs ago, Bug in Chief Bug Thomas Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Bugs that we are blessed with which alien inalienable right? Um, uh, uh, the right to own sentient space fruit as slaves. Unsettling, isn't it? You'd never guess just by looking at them that they're watching and judging our every move. During the bug war of bug. 1812, General Stonewall Bug Jackson held off the nefarious frog armada single-handedly. How many mecha frogs did he crush under the wheels of his Mercedes Bugs? Uh... 420, I swear. They counted them twice and it's not just a pot joke. <laughs> Shameful moment in our history. He regretted it for the rest of his life. Last question, Mr. Hop. How do you feel about fractions? Um... I am... They're an intuitive way to represent a non-integer value. Spoken like a true bug. I'm impressed, Mr. Hop. Yours is the first perfect score our fake naturalization <laughs> program has ever seen. We were going to fire you into the sun, but instead we've decided to issue you a work visa. If you'll just sign here... Yeah, F yeah! Oh yeah, look at my work in holiday visa. To Bartholomew Salience. Uh, I'm gonna do a smiley face. Yeah, like this. Uh, with some sparkles. Yes, that's looking pretty great. Hashtag YOLO Yeah, that's a that's a pretty great signature, I think. Okay, wave Mal oh great, now we're on Mars. And can we go down again? Oh Where are we going? Whoa. Ah, we are descending into... As conceived in 1632 by Portuguese printing press operator André Felipe, boxing was a gentleman's game in which two men would square off and regale each other with stories monotonous for days on end until one of them fell to the ground from boredom or exhaustion. Over the next few years, the new sport developed a respectable following of a few hundred local socialites. What? What's going on? I'm in this peaceful underwater landscape being taught about boxing. This is... What's going on? It was Felipe's son, André Felipe Felipe, who developed what he called the punching strategy in 1637 after seeing a schoolboy strike another in anger, causing him to fall down. When André Felipe Felipe challenged the then champion, British expatriate sleepless Bill Bishop to a match, Bishop was the odds-on favourite. You can imagine his surprise when, while he was describing what he had had for breakfast that morning, André walked up and thumped him in the neck, sending him down for the count in the parlance of our time. Can I lick the fish? What is this?
this game. Workers universally agreed that the boy had violated the spirit of the game. Officials were unable to find any actual rule that punching violated, and were forced to let the victory stand. This upset caused an uproar in the boxing community large enough to spill over into local newspapers, which drew the interest of many outsiders to come see what all the fuss was about. The newcomers were enthralled to engage in these borderline barbaric displays of human strength and skill. And the rest is history. After a few spoiled sport school moms single-minded about safety added the padded gloves, of course. Well, that, uh, we're learning about boxing Today's as well. boxing enthusiasts fantasize about a newcomer that would drop the ring the way Felipe did. Calcification of the modern rule set has essentially locked the punching strategy into place. But it's easy to get caught up in the fantasy. Oh, Young scholars with big dreams often enter the ring with their crazy new trick. Usually a variant of hypnosis. And though they've achieved the occasional victory, none of the gimmicks have been robust enough to make it to the big time. Maybe I keep going down? Maybe I meant to go up now. The real wonder, though, is that Andre Felipe's original vision of boxing is still around. Gentlemen's boxing clubs can be found in cities all over the world. You can visit one most any day of the week and see two erudite gentlemen exchanging pleasantries in the ring. Most people only come to watch a few hours of a match and then leave. But every once in a while you'll find amongst your elders a stout fellow, a die-hard fan, who perhaps witnessed that historic battle between Felipe and Bishop, who for love of the sport must stay to witness the last glorious seconds of wakefulness slip away, only to return to fight again another day. What? Um, now there's a space guy underwater. No, that doesn't do any great clicking, does it? I guess I keep going down. This is such a weird game. Uh, keep going places. Maybe I'll get somewhere eventually. Come on. That's my way out of this nightmare. I mean, the music's nice and everything, but... Ah, it keeps happening. What? Oh, it's a crashed spaceship. Haha, <laughs> see you later, suckers. Is that it? The rumbling seems to have stopped, and you feel the intense downward pressure let up. After a moment, you calm down enough to start talking, start, sorry, taking in your surroundings for the first time since the seemingly dormant vessel sprang to life. Command module. The walls of this circular room curve to meet at a point that must correspond to the curved nose of the outer hull. Lining the walls, you see a porthole, a glowing display, and a control deck. A ladder leads aft. If you don't know how to get started, type help and press enter. Uh, help. Uh, this is a story you can interact with by entering simple English commands. Look around, I'll just type look, x whatever I want to examine, inventory. Okay, look. Uh, walls of this circular room curved to me, yeah, okay. Uh, climb ladder. Uh, Captain's quarters. This looks like an all-purpose living area. A sleeping pod sits next to a nightstand. A ladder leads to the fore. An oriental rug lies in the centre of the aft wall. X rug. This decorative oriental rug sits in the centre of the room. Looking at it more closely, it doesn't quite lay flat on the floor. There's a significant dip around the middle. Move rug. Moving the rug, you discover a recess hatched below it. My score has gone up by two fifths of a point. Okay, open hatch. You have to work it a bit, but after so 
you give the wheel a few spins, the hatch pops open. Uh, 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 exit hatch. Uh, go through hatch. Ah, here we go. Nearly every surface in this room is covered with a sticky pink goop, which seems to be thicker near a grey machine sitting in the corner. A hole in the wall exposes a nest of wires. There's a hatch leading back to the captain's quarter in the th far. X goop. Gop goop. Uh, eat goop. Oh. X wires. Peering into the exposed machinery, you can see what looks like an empty coffee can that you're guessing doesn't belong here. Take can. You twist the can and it eventually comes loose, but you've ripped the insulation off of an adjacent wire in the process and it begins sparking as it comes into contact with an adjacent strut. You glance down at what you've taken. Huh, it really is a coffee can. Oh. Okay. Fill can with goop. The goop is stuck to the surfaces. X wires. Uh, there's a bare wire in there. Lick wire. <laughs> okay. Um, what we got? Uh, X machine. The machine consists consists of a spigot aimed at a flat platform. A handwritten sheet of paper has been hastily taped over the base of the platform. Paper. This is the out of order note that's included in your game package. What? Um. Uh. Um, uh, okay. Um, where do I go? Open draw. Take manual. Read manual. It's a manual for the navigation computer and the command module. After leafing through it, you feel confident you understand how to use the interface well enough to set up a route back to Bugmars. My score has gone up by two and an eighth points. Go command module. The walls of this circular room Okay. X display. Glowing green display shows a map of the galaxy with the destination you don't recognize marked and an ETA of about 3,000 years. Looking closer, you see on screen buttons labeled route details and new destination. New. Uh. You deftly plot a course back to Bugmars. The engines roar and you feel G-forces shift. The AT ETA reads 57 and 3 fifths years. Huh. You run a diagnostic and determine that the vast majority of the time is going to be spent going through bug customs. Luckily you can sleep through most of it. Uh, sleep. Okay. Uh, where do I go? Go ladder. Uh, use sleeping pod. You have to be more specific. Sleep in sleeping pod. Okay. Uh, what next? Sleep in the sleeping pod. Your head has barely touched the pillow when an alarm begins repeating. Perfume chamber empty. You will wake up cranky. 
You assume it's going to stop eventually, but a couple of minutes later it still hasn't. You get up, there's no way you can sleep like this. Uh, go living area. Wait, I'm in the living area. Go. Uh, go aft. Uh, nearly every surface of this room. Um. I have no idea what I'm meant to be doing. Go, Captain's Quarters. A ladder leads to the floor. Go, ladder. Must be something to do in here. Let's see, all purpose living. Uh, sleeping pod. Looks like a bed with a lid, but you have to assume it's got some sort of suspended animation functionality. I mean, right? There's a hole on top next to a gauge reading empty. A hole. Uh, sleeping pod looks like a bed. Okay. Put. Tin in hole. Um, okay. Go hatch. Fill tin with goop. Uh, use tin on goop. Use Tin on machine. <sighs> Take paper. You rip the note off, leaving a fluttering piece of electrical tape behind and revealing a control panel. Most of the control panel is rendered unusable by a sticky pink goop. You see a row of what look like radio preset buttons, all but two of which are stuck. There's also a big red lever. None of these are legibly labelled. Uh, well, I'll uh, pull the lever. The machine words, dispensing mom's speciality, say, a voice says, pink goop streams out of the faucet, splashing everywhere on the flat platform. Oh, a couple of drops land in your mouth and you recognise the flavour, bacon milkshake. Atmospheric anomaly detected, a different voice says, a whirring sound in the shoes and the bulk of the goop is sucked into invisible vents, leaving just enough goop floating around to be gross and annoying. Atmosphere purified, the voice says triumphantly. Okay, put tin on platform. Uh... It's got a, a spigot. Attach tape. Attach tin to tape. Um, stick tin to tape. Um, use tape on tin. Uh, tape. Okay. Ah, I want to use a... 
examine the control panel. Buttons. Two of these presets look like they're not completely ruined by pink goop. The leftmost one is depressed and the left one is... Uh, press leftmost button. Raise button clicks into place and the previously selected button pops up. Local currency says a robotic voice. Um, pull lever. Uh, dispensing local currency, a voice says. A thick stream of Zork mids straight shoot out of the faucet, bounce off the flat platform, and scatter around the room. Collect Zork mids. You spend a few minutes gathering up the scattered Zork mids. Your score has gone up by a third of a point. Yeah, I'm learning all the fractions today. Mm. Okay. Um, put tin on platform. Uh, I don't know. Stick. T uh, take tape. Use tape on tin. Use tape on platform. Use tape on lever. X tape. I don't know. Uh Fill tin with goop. The coffee fit tin. I understand so far, only so far as fill coffee. Take goop. You can't get a meaningful, uh, use tin on machine. X tin. Inventory. Are you holding the, oh, it's can, right, okay. Use can on tape. Tape to can. Attach tape to can. Uh. Oh, my God. Um. You place the can below the spigot. Right. Pull lever. Oh. Right. Press rightmost button. Okay. Pull lever. Dispensing on speciality. Uh, coffee can ends up filled. Okay. Go hatch. All right, X bed, uh, sleeping pod, put can in hole. You bring the can close to the hole and then the hole sucks the pink goop right in. The nearby gauge fills up. Sleep. You try to sleep but you can't. That bare loose wire might start a fire. Oh, okay. Go, engine room. Use tape on wires. You wrap the tape around the bare wire, insulating it. Your score has gone up by one and two thirds points. Go, hatch. Sleep. Whoa. What next? Sleep. Uh, you lie down in the sleeping pod, close the lid and drift off, secure in the fifth 
that in 57 and something years you'll return to Bug Mars, a wealthy frog. When you wake up, you're clearly not in your sleep pod. You blurrily glance around and get your bearings, and you appear to have been sleeping in a heart-shaped bed covered with roses. A voice comes from the next room. Awake already? A wispy human figure in a bathrobe and a crown walks in. She bends over and kisses you on the nose. Suddenly you feel your body shifting. Yay! She laughs and claps. And you realise you've been transmogrified into a human form. Oh my god! What? Oh great. Th this, this is brilliant. I, I, <laughs> Watch out, man! They're eating your fruit! Uh, no! Shit! You awake with a start. What a horrible dream! You call your friend Draggy the Frank Flying Dragon just to talk to someone. Yellow? Draggy says. I just had the worst nightmare. You explain the situation. I'm not sure that a support group for human bug eaters is really going to get much of a following, Draggy ponders. Maybe if we drummed up a little publicity first? I know that just the PR agency. Five minutes later, Draggy shows up at your door dressed to the nines. He tosses a frog tuxedo at you. Put this on, babe. We're running for president. Ha 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 Candidate Hop, what do you say to the allegations that you are not a natural born citizen, that you're under 35, and that you're a frog? D is this DDR? Am I playing DDR? <laughs> oh my god. No, I'm bad at DDR with my fingers. <laughs> Ah, uh, <laughs> God! Oh my God! How do you play DTR with your fingers? <laughs> I used to have some. I knew somebody in the anime society in university who was really good at this as well. Is this even doable? Oh my god, <laughs> I can't do this. Does this not end until I get like a good score? Because I could be here a while. Uh. Oh man, constituency loves an underdog. You're a shoe in for president. <laughs> yeah. I'm being crowned president. <laughs> Betsy Bluebonnet. Sir Clarence Glacastropod. Ferdinand Croker. Flaps McQueen. Morag Hieli. And introducing. Draggy Ceiling Eater as himself. Created by Twin Beard. <laughs> Numerators and denominators. Frog fractions. Here's your bug coffee, Mr. President. Heavy on the cream. Bug weather, hot and dry. Weather report, hot and dry. Bug assets, 20,000 Zork, 22, 2 million Zork mids. Cost of produced bug porn, 10,000 Zork mids per megabyte. How many megabytes of bug porn do you wish to make? Um, is it, tw is the answer 20? How many pop-up banner ads? 15,000 Zork mids each do you want to purchase? Uh, don't worry, this interface is only temporary. Bug software engineers with... Uh, I don't know, ten! What price do you wish to charge for a megabyte of bug porn? I don't know... Three hundred! Impressive wingspan. <laughs> what is this game?! 
Super performances made today. Bug pawn too hot. The warehouse burned down. You made 20 megabytes of bug pawn at 10,000 megabytes. A megabyte. You hold sold zero megabytes. A mega... A, a budget... 3,350... No, wait. 350,000 GDP of zero... Profit minus three hundred and fifty thousand assets one million six hundred and fifty thousand. How many Zocnids do you want to ordeal these bug Federal Reserve? To I don't know. Thirty thousand. Confident, huh? Press faith. What upgrade would you like to install? Oh, we've installed the work visa. We've got the. Uh, I can't afford anything. I've got all the things. I can't. What is this even? I don't. <laughs> I don't understand. Ah, oh, that is not a number. I don't know zero. Ah. 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 Capitalism tip, be sure to charge more for your product than it costs to produce. It's not you, it's my inability to distinguish you from prey. What the hell? Alien House Bug Paul Musician decided to make Bug College Rock today. Nobody's quite sure what to make of it. You made zero megabytes of Bug Paul at 10,000 apiece. You sold how many Zork mids? Oh, fuck, I don't know. What upgrade would I like to install? I can't afford anything. I can't. Cloudy. What's going on? Book economy weather manager. <laughs> Make this game go away. <laughs> Fortunately, I only have, I don't know. Thanks, but uh, I'm into ladybugs. Whoa. Uh, the in-house bug porn musician decided to make bug Christian rock today. Nobody's sure what to make of it. I don't know. Can I even install anything? Maybe I just exit. Can I just exit? Can I, how do I get out of here? I don't want to be doing this anymore. Get me out. Help. This game, what? The... You know what? Screw this game. I'm exiting. I'm scared and confused. And I don't like this anymore. It started out as a game about frogs, and now I'm doing bug porn maths. Go away. Bye. Bye, game. Not playing this anymore.